Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to show a question that a lot of software have asked on the support center is how to get your existing SAF solution integrated with the new uh, SAF Blazor UI. So we're going to talk about both uh, choices. One is a completely application from scratch, but do you want to have Windows, Web, and Blazor in the same uh, solution? And the most common is that you already have a SAF application and you want just to add the Blazor part. So right here, if you see, there are two wizards and the wizard currently don't support to add Blazor directly to your existing application. But you can always add those projects and convert your agnostic module into net standard. So let's see how that's done. And right here, there is a, the link of how to pull your SAF platform agnostic to from net framework to net standard, but let's do it. So first thing, we're gonna create a regular SAF application and then we're going to create the SAF Blazor one and then we merge them together. Okay, let's choose a 20.2.4 SAF Blazor, SAF solution. That's the regular one with Windows, Windows and web. So let's put SAF unified project. Let's click create, choose Windows and web, XPO. Let's choose a standard authentication. And let's choose uh, validation, reports, and conditional appearance. Meanwhile, I will be opening another Visual Studio to create the, use the wizard to create the sub laser one. Okay, so in this case, create a new project. Let's select the SAF Blazor wizard. And a nice tip here is to put in another location. You see, we put it on temp first. Let's quickly, inside of temp, create another folder. Temp2. Temp, temp. Yeah, just to, to have another folder because we want to put the same exact name. SAF Unified Project. Let, let me make sure I don't have any spelling. Okay. And let's click Create. XPO, Standard Authentication. And let's choose again Validation Reports and Conditional Appearance. We should be good to. So right here we have our Blazor project and below we have our regular SAF. So how I will go about this. If this, if my intention was to create a blank from a scratch project that have the tree, I will keep the mo the, the mo agnostic module that the Blazor wizard give me. And I will put the Windows and web project here. But because we are going to uh, account for the scenario that you already have an existing SAF application, let's do it the other way. So I will pretty much say edit profile. Javier, edit project. Uh, maybe you can show the 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 module because like to see the difference between the regular module, even though both are agnostic, one reference DLLs and one reference NuGet packages. So sure, just to uh, see like uh, to show the difference. Yeah, absolutely. And we are seeing it here. If we see here, this is an SDK project, and we also are referencing our uh, libraries through package reference, uh, so through NuGet. So and this was exactly the next step that I was going to do. I will take this project, I will copy it, and it will go to my other solution. So in here, if you see, I have to do the whole uh, project style that I have to load it, and then I have to edit project file to see, and this is the really verbose with a lot of things. That's the old way of doing things. So pretty much what I will do here, I will delete it completely, and I will copy the other one. So, and I will change to NER standard 2.0 because if not, we're gonna get an error that a project in NER framework 4.7 cannot reference a 2.1 and so on. So save here and reload the project. And before compiling, one thing that I always forget, we should delete the assembly info because now it's not needed, now it's taken care in the new uh, structure of the project. And 
Javier, well, like, I think that uh, we need to make sure that people understand the difference is that that, I mean, what we did is completely related to the net framework, not, it's not SAF requirement. Also to delete the, the assembly info is part of the changes from full.net to net standard and net core and so on and so forth. Got it. So if you see everything compiled right, and we already have our project in net standard 2.0.3. So next step, let's open a folder in File Explorer and let's go to our temp2 folder. And pretty much, because we have the same name on everything, let's just copy the model.blazor and the blazor.server. Let's copy that one, come back to our folder and paste it here. Perfect. Now let's add an existing project to the solution. So add existing project. And let's go to our 10 folder, unified project, model.blazor, and open that one. Let's do the same with the blazor.server. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So now if we see, because we use the same name and it was in the same uh, location regarding the agnostic model and everything, if we go to product, we even have all those reference perfectly here. So let's do Javier, one last Why, why don't you show the, the content of the, of the project, of the Blazor server? So you, we can show that we didn't need to change anything because it's referencing by um, by paths. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not like a full path. Yeah, it's a relative path. And because we are in the same location that the uh, last path. solution was, we're good to go. We are right here. Or two project reference, mm -hmm. the module. Otherwise, you would have to change that name. Yeah, no, if you have a different uh, nomenclature, a different name, if you have your project in a different location, you will definitely have to come here and arrange those uh, locations. But if you follow this, like using the same name, put it in the same uh, location as it was in the old solution, you're good to go. So if you see everything compiled now, all the projects. So let's see if this is working. Let's just go to our agnostic project. And let's say add a business object. So domain object one and let's put a name that's it and let's run the windows first and me Perfect. So we have right here, watch it, save and close. Let's close it out and let's go to the web. Mm -hmm. And let's run it. Admin. And right there, we have Hoshi. Navigation item and everything. And lastly, and this is the more exact, exciting one, let's do laser. And again, Jose, I think that with this project that is uh, almost blank, just one uh, business object, we can create a .NET new template and just push it out there so the community can, if they want, use it. Okay, it's running. And voila, watch it. 
So you see now we have just one solution that is targeting web, wind farms, and Blazor. How about that, Jose? Well, to tell you the truth, I think this is like the easiest way to do it, but it will depend on the scenario most of the time. Because if you have more modules implemented, you have to do a little bit more work. But if you want to see how it works from something that you already have built, that you are using only supported modules, then it, this is the way to go. Yeah, that's very really nice. That, that way you can have a web mobile application real fast, real quick with your current ORM. Okay, well guys, uh, thank you. I think that we're gonna be doing a couple more videos just in preparation for our meetup next uh, Thursday. We're gonna be talking about if SAP Blaze are ready for production. So I look forward to seeing you to see you guys all there. So until next one. Bye.